In my presentation today, I would like to address the use of computer simulation for solving environmental problems in the oil and gas industry. It is commonly known that during the transportation, processing, and extraction of hydrocarbons, there is a risk of environmental contamination with petrochemicals. Of course, it is very important to assess these risks. Computer simulation gives us an effective tool to assess, monitor, and manage these risks. If we take a look at the experience of the leading global companies that provide services in the oil and gas industry, as well as the oil and gas companies themselves, we see that these companies have been using computer simulation for the past several decades in order to assess environmental risks. They also use computer simulations directly in their mining operations. In Russia, computer simulation has only recently been applied to this industry. First, Oil and gas companies use computer simulation to assess oil reservoirs and to optimize oil extraction. At the same time, however, an assessment of the environmental impact is always conducted. Mathematical and computer simulation methods are also required to perform this assessment. Considering the various problems that can be solved with computer simulation, it is appropriate to apply this technology to perform environmental assessments of the placement of environmentally hazardous objects. Examples of such objects are filling stations, oil storage tanks, and other industrial facilities. Computer simulation is also used to investigate environmental contamination scenarios such as accidental oil spills and other anthropogenic accidents. Another application of computer simulation is to assess the negative environmental impact of heat from the combustion of oil, gas, and other petrochemicals. There are numerous environmental problems that can be solved with simulation, so we will only cover a couple in this presentation. In this presentation, I would like to show specific examples of the use of computer simulation to these problems in order to demonstrate its potential. In the first example, we consider the placement of a filling station. The proposed location for this station is not far from a water reservoir. The decision to place the filling station at this location needs to be made in accordance with the assessment of possible contaminant distribution and possible water reservoir pollution by petrochemicals. There are many software tools available that allow us to solve this problem. But in practice, it turns out that in most cases, we encounter trouble using these software packages since they are aimed at specific problems. For example, for our problem, we could use a software tool like Visual Modflow that can solve this sort of problem. However, in this tool, we also need to specify the contaminant concentration directly at the groundwater level in order to simulate the spread of contaminants in the groundwater and to assess whether or not it falls into the water reservoir. The user usually never has this initial data. The only thing he may know is how much the soil surface will be contaminated. Therefore, we have the following problem statement. First, we must compute how many contaminants from the soil surface will get into the groundwater according to the given thickness of the aeration zone, with its hydrological properties and other parameters that determine the dispersion of the contaminant set. With this data, you can use the commercial tool Visual Mod Flow to compute the groundwater distribution of the contaminants. When our company encountered this problem, we developed specialized software to solve it. This software was designed to compute contaminant distribution from the soil surface to the groundwater and compute the rate of penetration into the groundwater. The software developed by our company is based on the physics of this process. These physical processes are described by partial differential equations. If our problem is non-isothermal moisture distribution for contaminant distribution in soil, we use the heat equation, an equation for fluid motion, and the convective diffusion equation. Doing so, all the parameters in the model correspond directly to the physics of this process. Thus, the parameters are expressed in such a way that they can be measured and found in a reference book. Let's look at a computer simulation approach for solving this problem. First, based on boreholes, we construct a three-dimensional model of the soil layers. It is within these layers that the contaminant distribution will take place. Then, we specify physical parameters for these soil layers, which determine the distribution of the contaminants. 
Then, using our software, we compute the aquifer pressure and groundwater flow rate. The whole analysis is performed in three dimensions. Then, after that, we use the software we developed to simulate several variants of the scenario. In our example, we are interested in simulating two scenarios over 30 years. In the first scenario, it is assumed that the filling station is functioning normally. But even during normal operation, there is always surface soil contamination, and it is necessary to predict whether these contaminants get into the groundwater or reservoir. On the other hand, we consider a more serious situation. Here we assume an anthropogenic accident occurs. As a result, the soil surface layer is contaminated with petrochemicals at a certain concentration. Here we also want to know if these contaminants get into the groundwater or the reservoir that is located near the filling station. So, for the first scenario, we simulate how the distribution of the contaminant in the aeration zone changes over time and the rate of penetration of these contaminants into the groundwater. A similar approach is applied to the second scenario. Then, using these data and software to simulate contaminant distribution in groundwater, we make a prediction. This slide presents the simulation results showing what will occur in the groundwater after 10 and 30 years. We see that after 30 years, contaminants that got onto the soil surface will not reach the water reservoir. These results are for the first scenario in which the filling station was operating normally. For the anthropogenic accident that we simulated, we find that contaminants also will not enter the groundwater after 10 or 30 years. On the basis of these simulation results, it is possible to make a decision about placing a filling station here and to convince experts that these results are reliable. If an expert wants a reliable prediction, he should realize these models are based on real physics and that real parameters are put into the model and there are no correcting or adjusting coefficients. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize the following. First, computer simulation is an effective tool for assessing the risks of environmental pollution and for the control and management of factors affecting these risks. And of course, the computer simulation facilitates decision management. And second, when we have a specific problem, rarely can we find a ready-to-use software solution for it. It is often necessary, therefore, to develop your own simulation software that takes into account the most essential factors, allows you to define all the appropriate input data you possess, and get the results in the format you desire. Thank you for your attention.